Hey guys, welcome to another guide. This video we're going to be going over the Poison Mancer. Now before we begin, I want to say this is one of the most controversial builds by far. There are different ways to play the Poison Mancer, and this is my version of my Magic Finder Poison Mancer. Please keep that in mind going forward. So as usual, we're going to be going over our attributes, our skills, gear, mercenary, and in this guide, we're also going to be going over different areas where we can farm with this build. So as usual, strength, you just want to have enough strength to equip your gear. If you have a torch and an ante, you do not have to put any points in the strength for the gear that we're wearing. We also don't need to put any points in the decks because we don't need to max out block with this build. The rest of our points are going into vitality because of course we don't want to put any points in energy. Now here's the first part of this build that's a little bit controversial. The skills. So the Poison Mancer can be played a bunch of different ways. This is in my opinion the most popular way to play it if wanting to safely clear most content. The most efficient way to build it if you want a magic find. And it's to go for Skeleton Army and Corpse Explosion. So starting off with the summoning spells, we want to max out our Raised Skeleton, we want to max out our Raised Skeletal Mage, and put one point in the Skeleton Mastery, Clay Golem, Golem Mastery, and Summon Resist. Revive is not needed, and nor is it worth it in this build. So let's go ahead and move on to our Poison and Bone spells. We're going to put one point in a Bone Armor, which also isn't needed, because I've seen most people opt to take it just for a peace of mind, so we go ahead and put a point in here. We put a point in the teeth because it's a prereq for our corpse explosion. We only need one point in corpse explosion. Now we go ahead and max out our poison dagger, poison explosion, and of course our poison nova because poison nova will be our main source of damage and our corpse explosion will be our secondary source of damage. So the poison dagger, poison explosion are obviously what boost our damage for our poison nova. Now let's go ahead and move on to our curses. We only put one point in amplify damage. Now I just want to go ahead and go over this real fast in case anybody is confused or wondering why only one point here and one point there. Poison Mancer scales very well with plus skills and between our skillers and gear and end game Poison Mancers are insanely powerful. That and skills like Corpse Explosion and Curses, here you can see right here, the only thing that it does is increase the radius. Now if we go ahead and take a look at things like Clay Golem for example, now remember, we only put one point in the clay golem, but because of our skillers and the gear that we have on, we have a total of 18 points invested in the clay golem. This is before buffs, of course. Now, this is 8.8k life, and it slows by 61%. So, with our skeleton mastery, golem mastery, and summon resist, they're all sitting at 18, and our skeleton mastery sitting at 20. This is by far enough. So I just wanted to go over that real quick in case anyone was actually confused about it. So here comes the actual controversial part of the, uh, the build, the gear. Now there's many different ways and many different things that we can wear, but again, I just want to make it clear, this is my magic finding setup. This is not meant to min-max damage, this is to farm keys, I-85 areas effectively, and by effectively I mean in 30 seconds to 2 minutes per area and or run. So, Starting off, we have the Shaco. Now, this is obviously the best choice. It has our plus skills, life, and our 50% magic find. This one actually doesn't have a socket, but if it did, I would just slam an Umrun in it. It gives, in the Umrun, the helmet slot, it gives a plus 15 to all resistances. Now, the weapon that we have equipped is the Death Web. I just use this personally for a bit more damage, but you can totally use an Alibaba with two 5-5 five five poison die facets. That would give you a 10% poison skill damage. Now, on our weapon swap, of course, we have a CTA and a Spirit Shield. This is just for our battle orders and command. For our chest piece, we have Enigma. This is obviously just to teleport around, but it also gives us our plus two skills, the strength, and the big chunk of magic fun. Mars is the amulet of choice. We have plus two skills on it, plus 30 all resistances. You really can't go wrong there. The shield of choice is, again, a spirit shield. I use this because it gives plus two to all skills instead of train that gives only plus two to poison and bone. I'd rather have the plus two to all skills because it benefits everything inside the build, including our summons. Um, it also helps us with the 35% FCR, hit our 75% FCR breakpoint. 
For our gloves, we use train gloves. This is obviously, again, to help us hit the 75% FCR breakpoint. It also gives us 25% poison skill damage. For rings, we're using two Stone of Jordans. It gives us a massive mana pool. You can see in the bottom right here, we have 819 total mana. That's just massive. Since we're equipping two of them, we have plus two to all skills. For the belt, we're using an arachnid. This is the third and final piece that helps us hit that 75% FCR breakpoint. It also gives us plus one the skills. Overall, just the best belt in my opinion. Now, the last item that we're using, of course, is the war traps. Now, again, this is a magic finding build, so there's no other better pair of boot unless you have some god tier rares that have tri res and some magic find but even then our resistances are, are looking pretty good especially with the small charms which we'll go over now for our inventory again this is end game i don't have a geeds on this character so i have max skillers 40 lifers um again if i had a geeds i would replace one of them place a geeds in the inventory for the small charms we're using 20 life all resistant small charms we have our Torch and our Annie. Now it's time to go over our Mercenary. So in every build that I've made yet, we opt to go for Indario's Visage on our Mercenary. In this case, we're not. And this is why. The Indario's Visage has a 15% chance to cast a level 15, level 15 Poison Nova when struck. This actually overwrites our Poison Nova which as you can imagine is pretty bad when it's only a level 15 and it doesn't have the the scaling that we have so we use a vampire gaze this helmet is actually a really good helmet if you have a really good hard-hitting weapon on your mercenary in this vampire gaze i also have a 4015 ed ies jewel in it the weapon of choice is obedience. I think the obedience is a very good weapon. I think it's very, very slept on. Um, the obedience makes your mercenary just hit like a truck. Now the armor of choice here, I just have my e-bug fortitude in, but a fortitude or a treachery. A treachery would be great on it as well because the increased attack speed, the leech. Um, it's really just personal preference. It's it's also if you what you have at the time so now that we went over our gear and our mercenary we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about farming spots so for our farming spots this build can effectively clear most content that you would want to do but the build lacks the ability to kill bosses fast but that's why we opted to go for skeleton army plus heavy hidden mercenary and to amplify damage it's not incredibly fast but it allows you to kill the bosses just fine Amp damage, poison, and let your minions and mercenary do all the work on bosses. Now on top of the bosses, the big areas slash farming spots include full key runs, which are Countess, Summoner, and Neolithoc. The pit, which is, this is the best build to farm pit super fast by the way. It's an I-85 area. Mausoleum, which is another I-85 area. Ancient tunnels, I-85 area. The poison immunes here can be a pain, but again with army, mercenary, plus corpse explosion, this is very doable. Temple runs, Drifter Cavern, Cow Levels are also a breeze, Trav runs, Chaos runs, Eldritch, Shank, and World Stone is also very doable unless you run into Poison Immune, which is very possible.
So that's it for the guide. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, thumbs up, comment down below what build, guide, or video you would like to see next, and also hit the notification bell to remind it when another new video is uploaded to the channel. I will also be streaming on YouTube for the release of Diablo 2 Resurrected and will be uploading more and more content when it's released as well. You can also follow me on all social media platforms, links will be in the description down below and they're also hyperlinked in the bottom right of my YouTube banner. So until next time, happy hunting.